Good evening. Welcome to Queen Anne's County Board of Education work sessions for March 18th meeting. But we do have some questions and also uh, reiterate some of the things that have been set out previously. Dr. Kane, would you like to start off with? Absolutely. Um, in such an unprecedented <laughs> turn of events here, we find ourselves in a situation where we've uh, closed schools across, uh, across our state and have um, really focused our efforts on ensuring that the children were dismissed from school in a safe manner, that they're, they're uh, being well taken care of, and that we feed them. That was, our, that was our first priority, or at least our first two priorities. After that, we focused on our employees. We have remained in com communication with parents and with our employees, the community. I believe we are on communication number five for our families and somewhere close to that for our employees. So we've been keeping everybody up to date and re recalling that it is still just day three of the closure of schools. So quite a bit has been done. And, and before I say anything else, I really, really have to give and just am ecstatic to uh, offer up some praise and some thanks to my team. My leadership team has been with me side by side. We've done conference calls throughout all of the days. Uh, Mr. Pender has been out scouring the stores from here to Delaware uh, for goggles and supplies for our custodial staff. Everybody has been there. We've been figuring out who, um, you know, is in what category. Can we pay everybody? And thankfully, we've been able to continue to pay everybody through March the 27th, the date that we uh, are designated to end this. If not, uh, if we don't get other information to, that says otherwise. And, you know, as things look, it looks like it may be uh, much later than that. I, I, I have to admit that. I haven't gotten any formal direction that that's going to happen, but just from the things that we hear on the news with the CDC and, and how the virus is spreading across the country, it just seems inevitable. But uh, should I get information um, about that, I will be sure to share that with our community. Um, what I can say is that our students are being fed. We do have some information, thanks to Mr. Pender and our Sodexo team. Um, they're out there and, and ensuring that we have meals being served to our students right now at Graysonville Elementary, Queen Anne's County High School, and Sudlersville Middle School. Our um, lunch participation started out pretty slow, but by the end of um, Today, actually, we have probably tripled, if not more, the um, number of meals that we've been able to serve. We just received approval today from MSDE, the State Department of Education, that we'll be able to extend the sites that we offer our meals to. So we'll have two additional locations in the northern part of the county, and that will a communication will come out this evening with regard to that. We do communicate by email. We communicate by social media. We communicate communicate on our website and we have also communicated by robocall so that everybody so we try to make sure that everybody is aware we've had our communications to families translated to Spanish for our Hispanic speaking families to ensure that they know what is going on um, so we'll do that we've get had a number of community members community um, groups that are volunteering to either have food drives or uh, donate food or transport food to any family who may need it. And at this point in our county and across the state, families do not have to uh, show identification what we do request for the meals that we serve is that the child is with the adult who will make sure that they pick that meal up. So they're grab and go. We're currently serving um, lunch and breakfast for the next day, but starting tomorrow, we will serve lunch, breakfast for the next day, dinner, and a snack. So we will have three meals a day plus a snack for all of our locations. Uh, county Ride, the County Department of Transportation has offered to, um, you know, help us to transport those meals um, in the northern end of the county. We are working on trying to um, getting approval to transport meals in the Kent Island area for families who might need that. So we have pretty much covered the county with regard to the meals that we're serving and along with the meals that we're serving 
serving from um, the, the um, Queen Anne's County Public Schools, our community members are committed to ensuring that anybody, including an adult who may need uh, food gets that. Um, we also have our uh, backpack committee, Queen Anne's County uh, backpack committee. They will be serving meals in backpacks on Fridays at all of the designated locations that I uh, just mentioned. And that food will serve to um, feed children over the weekend. So we're working from every angle, and we are just appreciative of all of the partners and the Queen Anne's County employees who have reached out to myself and members of my team just to offer their support, to offer their thanks. And uh, every day we get emails saying thank you for what you're doing. Uh, we appreciate all of the communication. We understand what's happening. Let us know if there's anything else that you need to be done. And so that means the world to us because, as you know, it's a, it's a, there are just five of us that are working at this, but we know that we have all of the support that we possibly can from our community. Community and that makes all the difference. Um, I, it's a, a complicated thing because we have so many employees at different levels and stuff. Delivering meals, that's going to be other agencies doing that. We're not going to take responsibility. I mean, we we're, we're, we're have meal locations, but for us, I just wonder what, what staff do we have that we could keep, you know, how long can we do this? We, we, we don't. So the county is work, working with us. Okay. And so they've offered up a county ride van and to... Van in. Mm -hmm. And the good thing that Mr. Penner points out about that is that the drivers of those county ride uh, vans, they have already been trained in food handling. So when we are delivering and distributing food, there are still restrictions on how that happens. There are requirements for how we handle food that we distribute and so uh, those folks are already trained to do that and we just got approval today so we'll be accessing those services to deliver meals to different areas of the county. Yeah, I, I want to thank all our employees because it's tough times and you know it's hard because you're, you're not at work you're telecommute you know some people can telework and things but you know there's gonna be some hard decisions in time if it goes on past our two-week period and I, the only thing I can assure you is one board member, everybody will be treated fairly uh, because it's, it's, a, it's a tough situation, but everybody's got to keep, keep you know, going. And a lot of people are going, I think, beyond their duty now that are working oh, without, and without, the a, without a doubt, so, uh, without a doubt. I want to thank all the people that are in our schools cleaning and doing things. I was going to say, our custodians, this, you know, that's right, have been sanitizing buildings. I'm talking not just desks and, and floors and things. They are sanitizing walls. They, I mean, everything. They have been very thorough and detailed. They had some training from Mr. Pender, Mr. Carter. They have really, really worked hard. Um, and, and we just, we couldn't be in the situation that we're in without them because sometimes I mean it's only human nature when you sit next to somebody and I'm doing a lot of work and somebody else is and it's all perception but maybe not doing it but these guys and girls are are pitching in I really want to thank them and you know what they're doing and you know we're doing everything we can which is it's great okay. the question on that subject um, I've received several calls from friends that are in pretty good shape and they want to know how they can help mm -hmm. and they read about the backpack program, they've read about the food delivery. So is there a central phone that the, yeah. the county has maybe sure. that they could call? So that's going to be on the website this evening. If it's not already, it'll be on this evening. Uh, Mr. Strait and Miss Amanda Enzer, who is our Title I um, liaison, she will. they will be coordinating those efforts. We have had several people to offer, just like I mentioned <clears throat> earlier, to support our efforts with regard to donating food or having food drives or delivering food. Um, and, and we had, we, we've gotten, you know, an opportunity to have Mr. Enzer and Mr. Strait to organize that, and, and they will be doing that. So their information, their contact information will be tweeted out. It'll be out on Facebook. It'll be on the website and all of those kinds of things. I'll make sure that that information is also in our communication this evening that goes out to family. So we'll get that out, get that out by every venue that we possibly can. Thank you. Um, and, you know, I talked to our candidate a couple times this week, and you know, things change hourly and daily. So, you know, a lot of things that will come up that we can answer today might have a different bearing tomorrow. So we all got to stay in that. But in, in light of that, uh, I've had some questions from different board members that maybe we could just, we have a couple questions that we would like to 
understand both for ourselves and the public. Um, we could do that, keeping it pretty much because we've got, you know, two weeks we know, and I think the chances of maybe extending that are probable too. So um, I'm sure there's plans. But Mark, would you have any? Well, <clears throat> we're all looking to March the 27th as uh, a possible return to normalcy. But this could go on for a lot longer. And I think we have to plan, not specifically, but generally, what is our reaction and game plan if this goes into April? Uh, what if it goes into May? Uh, children are not learning and not getting a, a credited, or is that a misstatement on my part? Well, there's, there's a little, let me put it this way. Um, across the state, we really are trying to have a unified effort in that, recognizing that every district has um, circumstances that make them unique, as do we. Uh, we were giving information to MSDE, Dr. Salmon, and her team to let them know our ability to have online um, learning across our district and not unlike most of the districts in this state we don't have the capability our all of our families do not have access to internet particularly in the northern end of our county and in some places where they do have access it is not um, at a level of reliability the connectivity is is spotty I'll say it that way and so that factors into the degree of online learning we can um, our students can access and so what we've done is we put together initially just so that uh, children could continue some level of learning a uh, guidelines for families so that they could access if they had access to the internet or if they did not have access to the internet some activities that their children could engage in some things that wouldn't require a great deal of uh, of knowledge about content areas for parents or whoever the adult might be that children are with at home that they could still continue to, to um, to learn or to, to work on their skills for reading and for math and in all the content areas. So all the content areas across all the grades, guidelines were given or some suggested guidelines. What we're working on as a state, because some states have a greater capability to uh, um, contribute resources than others, we are going to be working on sort of a, um, a repository where we can submit lessons and lesson plans and things like that that are aligned to state standards. Um, but the challenge is going to be, as it always is, what do you do for kids who can't access their lessons online? We do have teachers who have already uh, been working with their students online. I have already given the directive that we will not be grading any of those lessons at this point because we have not set up, we didn't have an opportunity to set up uh, you know, a platform or anything like that for families that could not access the internet to use. So in order to be fair to everybody, I, I don't want to have a situation out there where we have one teacher having kids that have access to internet submit lessons and graded, but the, some kids in that same class don't have the ability to do that. So we've asked for none of that to happen. Basically, those that could get necessary accreditation are slowed down to the to others that are misfortunate uh, condition can't get to an internet. Uh, one of the things that I'm looking at um, is that we have seniors that are thinking about graduation, and you have advanced placement testing that isn't going to happen as scheduled. Uh, these types of things. Uh, there are a wide variety of opportunities. Uh, but they have to get all listed and prioritized. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure that your team will do that. Well, across the state, those are things that we're working on. Don't worry about here. Don't, well, I have to worry about here as well, but we function within a system that's a statewide system, but and our standards are statewide. We're different than all we're, 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 not, we're not different in terms of how we accredit right how students right. earn their credits that's a statewide effort so we are not different in that respect what we're doing across the state 
as well as in Queen Anne's County, is we're looking at ways to possibly continue our, our learning online or when kids don't have, just like I mentioned before, don't have access to the internet. Across the state, we're concerned about graduation. You know, there are some things that we have answers to today, and there are some things, a lot of things, that we won't have answers to today. And graduation is one of those things that we don't have. We do know that SAT testing has been canceled um, at this point. College Board, that's the vendor that does AP tests, they are still working just like everybody else is. Because remember, this is day three. I, and Not week three, but or month three, but day three. I so everybody's working hard. We don't need to have all the answers that we're going to be confronted with on the 27th of March. But at some point, we get to catch our breath and then look beyond what could possibly be happening. What have we learned? What do we need to set up? Who needs to be in charge of what? Uh, if this thing goes uh, to uh, April or May, we've got serious issues to deal with and we need to have them anticipated and have people in line uh, to have a responsibility. Mr. Anderson, I can assure you that our team is working to capacity and beyond. There are just some things, and I will reiterate that again, there are just some things that we do not have answers to today. That doesn't mean that we're going to wait until March the 27th to get an answer. But we do work within a system, a statewide system, in order to have consistency across the state that we have some expectation that they will God give us some guidance in what to do. And that was my conference call today. So every other day, all of the state super, the superintendents across the state have a conference call with Dr. Salmon, the state superintendent, and we talk about where we are in terms of providing online learning. We talk about where we are in terms of closure, where we are in terms of what employees are working or are not working from home. All of those kinds of things are discussed. In addition, we have conference calls across our county, and we also do a similar type of a thing. We talk about the status of, of of, um, you know, of whatever organization is that we represent. So I represent the school system. I give a status. We had been working with the health department on issues surrounding daycare for emergency personnel and public safety personnel, medical personnel, those kinds of things. We work through the weekend. We work every day, multiple calls a day, several conference calls a day. So it is an ongoing effort, not just for um, our school system, but a across this county to ensure that folks are safe, that children are attended to and fed. Um, and so it, it's an effort that's ongoing and I don't want to give you or anybody else the perception that we are not planning for what may come, although we don't know at this point what will come. That's a, that's a bit of a challenge, but we know that we have children that require, they have needs and, and academic needs are part of that. Right now our focus is on feeding them and we continue to work with other agencies to ensure that we are doing the right thing for our students and the right thing for our employees. And I, I know we're in a very early part of the stage, but kind of getting on that Mark's thing, we've been very fortunate in this county to have the technology we have. I mean, I think most of our upper classmen have laptops, hmm? even some in middle school and elementary. I don't grade, third grade. Third grade, but they don't take them home. All the way up. up. Yeah. So we're used to that technology, and that's been a great thing. Yeah. And I think one of the rewards that we could have if we can utilize that, if this thing, and I know it's only two days in, so I know you've got a lot of stuff on you, and I'm sure I sympathize, but if it goes four to six weeks, that four to six weeks out, is there things we can do with the technology we have? Because just because another county doesn't have it, if you think we have it and we can do it, I'd like to be a leader in that and do it. And I understand some of our internet is very weak in this county, especially up north. Or, or non-existent. Or non-existent. Then is there a possibility to have, and it's tough, and I, I know it won't be for 100% of people, but we can get more up hot spots like at our schools where people could actually, it's warmer, drive into the school parking lots, there'd be a hot spot for the whole school that would be utilized. Will 
90, will 100% be able to do that? No, but if we can get it from 60 to 70 to 80 to 90, at least we can get some of it. If, and I just, I, and I, you got a lot to work on, but it, I just am afraid we're gonna be, this is gonna go longer than shorter. It's gonna be at least two weeks. Sure. And I, and there's just so many things, I just wanna, don't wanna miss any opportunities. And one of the things is, bad as I am on budgets and not wanting to spend money, and we spend money, a lot of money on technology. Yeah. Let's be able to u utilize a, yeah. everything we can. So as just could bail us out right, right. now. Right. So as you know, because you have a granddaughter, we mm -hmm. do access technology for students who have it. Uh, but we don't want to go and start requiring grades when we know everybody is not equipped for that. Now what we have done is we've gotten some information from some vendors that are offering some mobile hotspots for families who don't. Not that I never want to um, say parents come to the school. We don't want to encourage gatherings of people, period. Even if we said they were going to stay in the car, so we don't want to do that. But what we are looking into is some of the companies that have mobile hotspots. Um, some of them offer for, for varying prices, but they, they seem to mostly be under $50. Would we have to uh, come up with a way to pay for that? Yeah, probably so. Um, but that is something that we're looking into to help to bridge that gap for families who don't have it or don't have the funding for the data that's required to access these lessons. So it's not just the internet access, it's connectivity and it's the data plan that families would have to have. And, and probably what I'll see and have, we'll see in the future, it's the parents too, because they're used to the kids coming here doing this. Even if it's there, some will access this because they're not gonna take time to work with their children, which, which our teachers do constantly. And I have no means that it should be graded and anybody should be held back because they did not have access. All I'm asking is, if we do have it, can we at least move some up? And then if we had to run a summer school or something in the summer to get kids that didn't have internet, just I'm just trying to think outside the box mm -hmm. of every, and but this is by no means a criticism of your staff or anybody. Just let's keep thinking outside and anything that comes up out of five of us up here, six of us, ten of us, one of us might come up with a good idea. That's sure. all. I, I could say this. Uh, there's not a stone that has been left unturned with this team that we have. We uh, argue each other's points. We, we look at different scenarios, and right now we're absolutely bombarded with tons of different vendors who want to sell us a million things. But we do take a look at the ones that seem viable. So we are, we are looking at things that we don't already have, just like I mentioned with the mobile hotspots. We don't have that. Uh, we certainly didn't budget for it, but if that's an opportunity, for us, we're looking into it. So I just want you to know that we absolutely are. Uh, I have a, a couple hundred years probably of um, experience on my team here and um, and I can tell you they know things as they well should that people, everybody, you know, as board members you don't know because that's just not your area of expertise. Mm -hmm. but, so but we rely to, on them but um, we're, for that. We're part of your team too. You and, are. And we want to sit there and, and support you and you're right, education we're not experts on, but we're also a lot of business people and been out in a community where we bring a different view of some things on that maybe I, some of the people don't yeah. see. That and I say that not as a, a negative. I, I don't say that as a negative because we are. We're all here for the same team. And I can tell you the camaraderie that this team has felt from our employees and our community has absolutely been marvelous. So I don't want you to think that I'm alienating anybody. I want to assure you that we're working on these yeah. things. That's the reason right. I said that. But I, in the, in I think the, the board's job is, is to understand the principles of what we're doing. <clears throat> Like for instance, when I hear we have to slow people that have access down because some people don't have it, I say, no, we don't want to do that as far as I'm concerned because the more people that get through the process gives us more time to concentrate on the people who didn't and get them caught up instead of having everybody caught up. That's where I'm I don't, I'm not sure what you mean, and um, but I, I certainly don't want to belabor the point, Mr. Anderson, but slowing people down and get the other ones maybe through summer school is not 
anything that I would ever subscribe to. Well, I, 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 I want to make sure, and we will we'll disagree. And, and, you know, yeah, we'll disagree on some things. I, I but I'm not going to leave anybody behind because they are not in a position to access something. It's my job to bridge that gap. It's all of our job it's to, bridge to bridge that bridge gap. It when you have a small right. well, I, I don't think, Mr. I mean, I could be, I'm not putting words in Mr. Anderson's mouth, and I, certainly I don't mean summer school. I'm not trying to widen the gap. I'm just trying to have the whole train go, and if part of the train slows up a little bit, then we'll have to put more speed it later on to get it caught up. But just, I want everybody to have every opportunity. But uh, that's right. You know, I just don't want to sit there and miss some opportunities. You know, that can happen. That's all. Bev, do you have any? One, one the thing on the technology, I think, and it, and it brings out st stuff we need to do in the future because we, for years, we've been given these laptops. The commissioners have been great about giving us the money to buy them. And I just, sometimes I'm not sure we're at the point where we should be. Because we discuss this every time we have a snow time where we're stuck home with snow. So we need to really get into a plan of what we're going to do in the future. And we can work toward that in the future. We should have a way that we can we can have a plan of action if we get this kind of an emergency or even just a two week, three week snow emergency and here's what we've got and here's how we connect and you know we've got that ability I and in your in defense of the staff we had a person on here who was moving in that direction her name was Christina Schindler and she basically got kicked out and she was perfect she was moving the whole staff in that direction personnel pardon personnel okay well she was moving it I'm sorry you're right she was moving everything we had the cap that the capability to do all of the technology and we got the items and we were working toward how to be best use them in the future and I really feel like we were heading that direction but we didn't fund a position to backfill so we didn't have that ability to continue so now that we've learned this lesson I think we need to move forward with it in the future right now though there are, and I'm experiencing, some teachers are putting stuff online for the kids yep. at all different levels. They are. And they're, they're working. They're working, at least the ones I run, you know, high school kids I've run into. And not um, just high school kids. Right. And, and you know, so elementary I, I, I and middle. First off, though, I'm interested, maybe we could go around staff. I'd like to know what, this way we don't keep asking, re repeating questions. What are we doing in each level? Like curriculum instruction in particular, I want to yeah. know what's going let, on. Let me, let, 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 me, just, let me just let me just interrupt help you with that. When we discuss things, and we, we, we can use the word teachers and staff, but no names because I'm sorry, I, I think I, it, 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 yeah. I can slip just as easy. It's just we want to make sure that we're not, it's no one person, and it's, you know, if we need to have that, we can go to closed session, which we don't right now. It's just going to be teachers and staff we'll talk about. Right. I'm sorry, I've been being real passionate about this right now, and so yeah, uh, and and I don't want to lose sight of the um, the sense, of the humanity, and just the the caring and giving spirit that has come out of this, uh, because this will of course be recorded, and I don't want to undo you know, what has already happened that has been so positive, you know, to turn this into something that is anything less than everybody coming together to do what we need to do for our students because that's what it has been. And I, and I, I'm going to do my level best to continue to preserve that and to continue to uh, enforce that or to advocate that we continue to come together. We're not looking for holes in a plan that came about overnight and we're three days in. If you, you don't have to look very far to find a hole, but what we have to focus on is that we're working to beyond capacity to ensure that we've done the right thing and that we continue to do the right thing by children and by our employees. That's our first focus. So I'm going to respond to your question about what has happened in curriculum and instruction. I can tell you that we have, before, just like I mentioned. You, before you start, mm -hmm. I, I just want to apologize. I'm, okay. I've been pondering over this for okay. a while and I I just was anxious to get it out yeah and um, I know a lot of hard work has been going on yes. and it's real frustrating I know it is for you all that we can't move along faster than we are so I, I'm sorry I'm not trying I'm not trying to take away what's been done it's it's awesome and it's a lot of work and I understand that so I want to apologize to you and your staff for that but I would like to know from each member what 
they've been doing, you know. It's I kind told of, them that I would angles. be speaking for them today. So okay. I can tell you whatever it is that you would like to know. If I have a question and need to call on one of my exec team members, I will certainly do that. As I mentioned earlier, we sent home to families the guidance for suggested activities as far as curriculum and instruction is concerned for what parents might be able to do with their children at home across grade levels, across content areas. We are continuing to work with MSDE. In fact, some supervisors will meet online on Monday coming up. And um, there have been an assistant superintendent uh, discussions. Every other day, we have superintendent discussions. There are not major decisions that have been made over these last three days. Uh, but we are all working toward ensuring that our children can continue their learning at home because we just don't know how long they're going to be home, right? I've spoken about what we're doing with um, Mr. Pender's areas. Our custodians have been hard at work. We've got the meals out there. Of course, you know there's no transportation going on right now. Uh, we don't have any major construction happening or anything like that right now. Uh, our team has been focused on making sure that we are covering all areas for our employees and taking care of our students. Of course, Ms. Bass, her, her team has been fielding calls, all types of calls for uh, retirement benefits fits and uh, FMLA and how that works and um, you know everybody's kind of up in the air right now so they've been she's been working with the rest of exec team and communicating our uh, our work and plans and, and what employees need to do as has Mr. Fister so we've all been at it and this is not to, I didn't say what I said to give uh, ourselves any undue pat on the back because this is our job so we're doing what we're supposed to do it's our job uh, under like I mentioned, unprecedented um, circumstances. Uh, but it, it was just to preserve that feeling of camaraderie. That's why I said what I said, because it's been, we've had a lot of um, response that has been positive and, and, and helpful for us. So I just wanted to bring that out. That's why I said what I said. Okay. Michelle, do you got anything you'd like to? Well, I'm sorry for my lateness, but I assume we're talking about the ability to teleschool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which I don't think is a shortcoming of the school at all. It's a shortcoming of the availability of internet services in this county, um, which the county is already aware of and county commissioners are working hard on it. So, and I think not only is the school seeing that shortcoming, other areas in emergency services are also seeing that, especially now. So I, I think everybody's doing their dead level best to try to meet the needs. And I know that you, uh, you're you on that conference call that we have with the rest of the department heads of the county. Um, so thank you for doing that as well. Let me let me ask you a question. And, it, it, it's, and I'll just say, I have a granddaughter to second grade. So she's doing some stuff on you know with her teacher. Do all teachers, and I know everybody's different, but are we doing this, is all teachers being instructed to give out some kind of work at different levels, I understand. It's probably a lot different in second grade. It's going to be in 12th grade on AP class. I understand that. But or just is this initiative by teachers or is it being coordinated by you all? So on, uh, we got the message on Thursday afternoon that school will be closed on Friday. So I sent out a communication to all of our employees to say that um, teachers focus will be on Friday, ensuring that kids have something that they can take out of there, out of school with them, so that they could continue learning in some fashion until we could get together something to, to have kids to start to work on. Um, and so that's probably what you, what your granddaughter has and what several of our students have. But in addition to that, teachers have been online with students and they have been offering assignments in addition to the guidance that we've given from the central office level. So yes, teachers are asking students to do work and they're, they're staying in contact with their students across the different levels. Because on that theory that you don't want somebody to drop behind, I wouldn't want six teachers doing it and four teachers not and all of a sudden those classes fall behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be a problem in the future. Yeah, so everybody knows what my expectation is, and, and we have reiterated today, and we will continue to do so. My expectation is not that teachers are going to be online teaching 
every day. That, that was not the directive when we left. The directive was to ensure that children had something to take home with them to continue to work, whether that was online or not online because of the different levels of connectivity. My expectation also was that we would not be grading assignments, just like I mentioned a little while ago. So that was the direction that was given to them. Teachers can continue to you know, work with students online and that and at different levels because the truth of the matter is we have different uh, levels of connectivity at home for our teachers. So I can't give a directive to a teacher that doesn't have the internet. So it, it, it's a lot of ifs here. And that's why I mentioned if somebody is looking for a whole Oh, they're going to find oh, a hole. Uh, well, I'm not, and I'm not faulting you. I mean, I'm not, I'm there's not, holes. Or holes. I like think that. we're doing That's a good right. job. And All I'm are. looking at is if I see a hole, I'm going to ask you a question. Sure. How do we cover it up or patch sure. it or get make sure it, we don't fall through it? Bridge the gap. Because two weeks, to me, is very sustainable. If it goes four to six weeks or into May and June, like Mark said, I mean, there's all kinds of issues of graduation, AP classes, you know, preparing these kids to go to college. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get another shot out. Right. And, and, and I would think if, if it were going to impact uh, to that level, that there would be guidance from the State Department to say what everybody is going to do, because you know we cannot have children in Queen Anne's County that have advantages that children, I'm talking about graduation, because everybody has the same requirements, uh, don't have in another county, and vice versa. So there will be some guidance from um, MSDE with regard to what districts are supposed to do should that occur. I, I, I might not be looking at this right. And I know you as a superintendent of schools are looking at it from 10,000 feet, state level, what the state mandates and stuff like that. I'm looking at it 500 feet, what's good for Queen Anne's County. And, and you best, can do that, but I, I have to not but, only be concerned with Queen Anne's County, but I have to, by law, comply with what MSDE says. Understand, and that's why I say what I say. But, but myself and I, the rest of the board members can speak for themselves. I'm looking for what's, what's right in Queen Anne's County. I didn't sign up to fix the state. I'm not signing up to fix the state, but I am compelled to comply with the state, else you won't have this superintendent. <laughs> That's the reality. Part of or me, any. We would like to give you some, I mean, there's some thoughts we have that since you have all these gatherings with the superintendents, you know, every other day, there's some thoughts I had. Like I was reading about the college boards from an article from Los Angeles. The college boards are seriously talking about giving AP tests online. So as the, our representative and, and in the state, I found out that we're one of the only schools, school systems that have this one-to-one -one, um, with the computers. But we need to advocate to the state that the state needs to get out there and somehow with the others, I'm sure Dr. Sammons is talking to a lot of state superintendents, hopefully. And as a, as a group, we need to advocate for the kids that the capability for taking online uh, AP tests is not there for everybody. So uh, my question is, it, it's a much bigger point than even the state of Maryland. Who is coordinating with the college boards on what they're going to be requiring? Is it the, the federal, state, Department of Education? I mean, who's, because that has to be done together, because otherwise, you know, the high schoolers are going to, Get and we're, we're aware, and, uh, yes, know, absolutely. We are well aware. That each, and the SATs. Correct. Know, just AP. Each, the state, yes, has representatives, and each district does, as we do. For us, it's Julie Forbes. So each district is in communication with College Board, and we are aware of that information that you just shared. But let me just put out there that that is not anywhere close to a definite. They are, College Board is looking at a variety of things to continue students' learning and ability to test. Uh, taking AP exams at home presents a whole host of issues. I don't think it's, it's necessary for us to get in front of a lot of things. I have a voice and I use my voice and the um, testing coordinators in each district, they use their voice. MSDE is aware of our concern, okay. um, but it does, it creates a whole host of concerns if, you, if that would be the case. And I'm not, I'm certain that we won't be the only district to speak out about that. Right. Yeah. Um, that, that's like, that, to me, that, I mean, I'm not sure if you've gotten to a point where you're looking at the big picture as far as priorities go. And I would be advocating, number one priority is the seniors. 
I mean, I don't have a senior. We're well aware, but yep. The seniors, their futures are very much impacted. Everybody else below that can catch up, um, including an 11th grader. But the seniors, I'm really concerned about. And um, hopefully, throughout the country, we're focusing on the seniors. How are we going to affect their ability to <clears throat> move into colleges? And I know colleges are have backing up going sure. on right now sure. too, but they've got a great system for online courses. So they're going to move on, even though they're canceling all the social things, you know, like graduation ceremonies and stuff. But our seniors, I think this group is is going to is going to have it the hardest. So hopefully, to me, that would be the number one priority. And is it helping is. our seniors. Well, our number one priority is feeding children. And I mean, when yeah, we talk about can. academics, absolutely, academics. seniors take precedent. Right. Yep. And that would be like, as I noted here, which are input I've gotten from senior parents, lots of them, um, course completions, um, GPAs, National Honor Society. Some of these things impact their ability absolutely. in college, future colleges. Absolutely. Timing, you know, the timing is horrible for them. Um, and so I think these are the kinds of things they wanted me to bring to the to you and to the board to say, be sure we don't forget these yeah. little things. Yeah. SATs were big. Um, they still got down to, to give the SATs, at least what I read, and the, the kids, you know, perhaps they're not even ready for it and they won't even have it in June or they won't have it in August or they won't have it in, you know, they have them every few months. So that's another thing. They're, they're concerned about scholarship offers. I'm throwing out things I've heard from sure. parents that sure. are important to sure. be considered, um, especially on the curriculum and instruction. That's the one I'm real worried about. Um, so I just want to throw those out. And then we, of course, all have the equal access issue, which which impacts all the kids, but I'm looking at the parents that are talking to me about their seniors. Mm -hmm. So that would, be, to me, be the highest priority is the seniors. To all of us. Okay. So let me just make a statement um, just to ensure our families that that is absolutely our priority. We're, we're well aware of the situations that seniors are in. Um, I have no... Um, I'm not worried that they're going to be left hanging in any way, shape, or form because they are a priority. So uh, I just want to reassure families to, to hang on for a minute. You know, this is at the top of our level of priorities in terms of academics, uh, but today we don't have an answer, right? We are looking for response from the state. They don't have an answer right now. Mm -hmm. It's new, right? But we will. I understand. They, yeah. they just want to make sure you don't forget this and don't forget well, that. I would never. Because they're very much in the... <laughs> I would never. But they're so into the middle of it right now, the parents. Sure. So We all are. Sure. We are, Laura. And, and we just want um, families to know that we recognize that it's difficult, um, especially if they have a senior. But it is definitely at the top of our priority. Okay. Um, the other thing was... Uh, I think it's interesting that the um, this federal board of education is not involved in this stuff at all. You, I would USD. think they would be the ones coordinating between the colleges and the high schools. And the, well, I don't, it, I don't, I don't know about that, but USDE has, uh, you, you know, yeah, reminded yeah. Uh, U.S. Department of Education has reminded um, everyone, uh, school districts, that you know, number one, there are some things that they. Uh, delegate out to states. So states do have a level of flexibility in terms of accountability. Uh, one, some types of accountability for state assessments. No decisions have been made about that. Um, with regard to how they reach out to higher eds, generally states do that sort of thing. But I don't know, you know if, if that would be something that they would, they would take on. In general, we are working with our hi higher eds in Maryland. We are, Dr. Salmon is looking at the possibility of having some student interns to support um, districts uh, or counties, I should say, not districts, ability to offer daycare, you know, to the emergency workers and public safety workers, medical workers, children. So she's looking at that. So there, there's a, a, a local aspect to it. Um, 
that I don't think USDE would be involved with. No, ordinarily I wouldn't want them to be involved, mm -hmm. you know, I, um, but I just see the, the bigger picture, which is how, if, if, if a local system can't make some agreement with college boards, somebody's got to step in and, and straighten it out. Just my thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. um, I do have another question, though, aside from curriculum, is um, when we do snow days, as I understand it, the teachers they're they're paid they're not really paid because they stay on at the end of the year and do the days that they they miss because they make paid. up days so they do get paid pardon they make up the days so they right, do they get make paid. them up so have we has there been communication on the um well, well, on let, that let me, side of where, where we're thinking of going with that that's also just bring one other thing with, with yeah. that's a, to me a, a close personnel issue they have a contract for 189 days we got a lot of different things. I'd rather just be, think that should most be in a, in a work session or closed session if we're going to discuss pay because that's a wide variety between teachers, other employees, 10 month, 12 month, hourly. That's something I think when we, in, its, in time, when we find out if it's going to be more than two weeks, it's going to be a real uh, tough subject to address. But I think we need to address it. But I, I, I agree. I've just been, have it, have been thinking about what how we work that and 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 that's uh, our our negotiated agreements are public they're they're online once they've been settled they're they're online so it's not a it's not a big deal to say that we've not been given direction there's we don't know what we're going to be doing luckily we didn't use any snow days we got five snow days we got a couple no, days possibly we, we don't have vacation. five we have three, we, three. Yeah. three so we um we didn't have to use our snow days this year so that would be three less days that we would have but once we have a better understanding Understanding of how many days we're actually going to be going to be out, we'll have an idea of if we're going to be required to make those up, or if the state's going to offer a waiver or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other thing is then the um, July 1st, you know, is our our budget thing, and we I know we've put it all stop on the budget concept because we're you guys are busy doing other stuff, but I don't know what the commissioners have been talking to you about, but we really are at a I'm not what, they're sure what they're going to do. So they are also on our, our, our calls, you yeah. know, for the department heads for the county. I haven't had I have had an opportunity to talk with Mr. Todd, uh, Mr. Mon, I should say, Todd Mon, and um, because we can't have gatherings, um, I'm not certain if they are going to have their hearings or how they're going to manage their hearings or if it's going to be on um, the cable TV channel or or how they're going to do it. But as far as we are concerned our board has approved my request and now it is at a place where uh, we would have to get some information or some guidance from the the county county government as to what they want to do or how they want to handle it I'm not sure about the the public hearings though I mean because I mean one thing they're gonna have to income I mean their, their highest revenue and, and Mark and you probably more up to date than I am is your property tax that's the majority of their income. Mm -hmm. Their income tax is the next big thing, and if the economy stays the way it is, that could be catastrophic to them. So, I mean, a lot of things could play into this. Um, but, like you said, that's in May. We'll have to just wait and see on what what happens there. They, you know, we put a budget in, and what happens? Mm -hmm. Anybody else for the good of the calls? I have a one. Um, the for the future for future meetings. I was just reading the, what you sent to us about open meetings. Mm -hmm. And um, I would, you know, for our next meeting, like April 1st, perhaps we need to figure a way to do that on a tele teleconference. And, you know, I'm, I'm in charge of the open meetings persons. Mm -hmm. And part of that is we would need some help on that, how to make that happen and be sure that the public is sure. able to access the meeting. Yeah, so we will, um, we can work with our um, Josh Combs, our technology person. Um, I put that out because I think, you know, by then we will have had some additional um, guidance from our health department <laughs> with regard to how many people can be in a, a room um, because it's, it's, you know, what it is now, but we don't know what it's going to be next week or next month. So, but we have a technology person that can help support us there. Maybe a way open forum could be done by a cable telephone channel. or cable or something. Or, or, right, or through the TV and, channel. And that or we give some options we could look at mm -hmm. because, you know, whatever. And I mean, it was talking about live. It, it mm -hmm. all throughout and that talk live. live and we're not live right, streaming the TV. Correct. So we would have to have a method of, you know, making yep. it so people can call in or mm -hmm. whatever. But I think the commissioners are live. They are. 
So, I mean, there's always a possibility of having our meetings at the commissioner's office. Mm -hmm. If it was live there and they had the technology that we don't, oh, yeah. there's a possibility, know you know, something to think about mm -hmm. that maybe we could have it over there um, than rather than here. If, if that's something that that's a little forward thinking, but you know, like and you it's said, it's only a couple of weeks away. That's yeah. why. I right, or bring or it, it, yeah, it's, it's possible that we could do it in the um, gym at one of the high schools with the 360 camera because they that there. offers okay. live streaming. Well, so there, there. there's a couple of things that we can look at. I mean, we've we've done that before, had it in um, at a school location for okay. whatever reason. That'd be even better. It might be an opportunity. A more next. Um, let's see. If No, I think we got it. Thanks. Mark, anything else? Michelle? I didn't know if I'd missed anything, any discussion on the child care issue. Um, we have direction from um, Dr. Salmon, the state superintendent, that we are not to open schools for child care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We did a poll just, just so that you can um, have an understanding in the public as well. We did sort of a, a, a poll for every district and um, most districts, I'm going to say that with with Queen Anne's County, there may be one or two others that have been approached by their county governments, but um, once they explained that um, we had been given the directive not to have child care, for the most part it was done. There's a contingency of elected officials um, on the other side of the bridge that had some concern and wrote Dr. Salmon as well. Um, but was explained and for the most part they understood. There may be some that do not understand right now, but we have been given a directive and, and we'll be following that. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dr. Kane, do you have anything else? Um, just again, thanks to all of our community members and our employees who've reached out to offer their support um, and their help. Even had uh, employees and, and parents to say, I've got 1,100 followers on my Twitter account or, or whatever and 900 and, and what message do you want me to send out? So it's been awesome in that way and the support from our own county um, officials and, and uh, county agencies has been wonderful. So just our thanks and, and hold on day by day, hour by hour. We'll be sure to get communication out. We put communication out every single day to one group or another, um, sometimes to both. So we'll continue to keep everybody in the loop, and we appreciate everybody working with us. So thank I, I you. I do want to note that I've been very pleased with the communication that you've been sending out to us and to all of the folks. Yep. If you get anything um, you know, new from the superintendent discussions, it would be useful for us and would kind of alleviate our, our worries of things that are being talked about. Yeah, I, anything that I can share, I, I do. Okay. Well, like I said, I want to thank everybody. It's, it's changing times. We've had issues before. We'll have issues in the future. Amen. We're going to get through this in a very positive way. A little bump in the road, but there's been other bumps that have been probably a lot worse than this one. Uh, I want to thank this staff, and I want to thank all our staff, everybody from, you know, that is in the school system that do a good job stick with us we're going to get out of this it's going to be the best for everybody we'll probably come out stronger i hope uh and I, for that i'd like to have a motion to adjourn so moved second all aye, aye. aye. meeting be adjourned